Each week we see new electric cars being announced by various companies, but each time it takes some time for these concepts to become reality. It can be exciting to see all of these electric cars get announced, but once it's time to buy, you may find that the options are a bit thin as to what you could actually take delivery of soon. Some of those options though, while available, may have you regretting your purchase. Today we're going to talk about the EVs you may regret buying and why, so let's get into it, and a special thanks to FE Metals for sponsoring a portion of this video. The first car you may regret buying is the BMW i3. This car is one of the EVs out there you may be able to find used for a steal. It may be so cheap that it doesn't fully make sense why you could buy an electric BMW for such an affordable price. Well, there are definitely reasons. Even with the newest 2021 model of the i3, the top range of this vehicle was 153 miles. That's achieved on a 42.2 kilowatt hour battery and leaves a lot to be desired when comparing to other electric cars, bringing around double the range. Another big factor is that fast charging tops out at 50 kilowatts. With such a small battery pack, I already doubt you'd be planning to road trip, but you'll be finding yourself stopping more frequently and for much longer than most EVs today that charge much faster. BMW says you can charge to 80% in 45 minutes, so it would take you about 45 minutes to then drive a maximum of somewhere around 120 miles. Quote, moreover, 19% of owners experience issues during the first year of ownership, according to the 2021 Driver Power Satisfaction Survey. The i3 was replaced by the iX and i4, which are much better options. The i3 is already disappearing, but definitely will live on in the used market. I think for the average customer though, it'll be a tough one to make sense. The next EV you may regret is the Nissan Leaf. The 2023 Nissan Leaf now starts at $28,040 MSRP and gets a range up to 212 miles in the more expensive models. For some, this could still be a good option depending on what deal you may find, but the Nissan Leaf also tops out at 100 kilowatt charging speeds only for the larger pack. The base model gets a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack with a max range of 149 miles and takes 40 minutes to charge up to 80% at a 50 kilowatt charger. So similar to the i3, you'll be stopping more frequently for longer, especially with the base model. The 60 kilowatt hour battery pack does support 100 kilowatt charging speeds, taking 45 minutes to charge up to 80%, but that model starts at $36,000. At that price, you're right on the cusp of affording a Tesla Model 3, which includes so many improvements over the Leaf, it's almost incomparable. For charging alone, you'd see 175 kilowatt charging speeds in a rear wheel drive Model 3, a 272 mile range, and access to Tesla's vast supercharger network. There's a reason why the Leaf keeps going, but another reason why Nissan themselves are moving on to an entirely new EV platform for the upcoming Aria. Soon enough, we'll see this replace the Leaf entirely in large part due to the drawbacks I mentioned. Next is the Chevy Bolt. Now, this car is interesting. In some ways, it could be the perfect car for you. It offers a 259 mile range with a starting price of $26,500. Right there, that could make this a no brainer for some customers. Chevy also has the EUV version of this car for just a bit more. With trims qualifying for a tax tax credit as well, you could get this car for a steal. The thing is, this car has seen a number of battery recalls. Those have been resolved, but it does worry some as to the long-term quality of this car. According to Consumer Reports, the main problems associated with electric SUVs are the in-car electronics, noises and leaks, power equipment, climate system, body hardware, drive system, and paint and trim. In this report, they cite that owners have had issues with the Bolt's drive system involving, quote, electrical failure, drive unit replacement, and other faulty components. These issues tend to pop up in the 2019 Chevy Bolt more often than in ICE models from that year, so it's worth thinking about if you're considering buying one used. As for fast charging, the Bolt also lacks here. Chevy says, add up to 100 miles for Bolt EV or 95 miles for Bolt EUV in 30 minutes. Due to its maximum 55 kilowatt DC fast charging speeds, the Bolt, like the last two cars, will have to charge more frequently and for longer on road trips. Here are real world tests done by inside EVs. It took them 75 minutes to charge the Bolt to 75%. To me, that's not worth signing up for if I needed this on a road trip. If this will be your daily driver, you aren't worried about the previous recalls, and you won't need to fast charge often, it could be the perfect car for you at an incredible price though. That said, GM is discontinuing this car even as sales are surging right now. That's because they're about to release their Equinox EV starting around $30,000. This will bring huge improvements over the Bolt and could be worth the wait if you're set on getting a Chevy EV. 
Next is a brand new EV that you may be considering because of the reliable brand it comes from, the Toyota BZ4X. The Toyota BZ4X starts at $42,000 MSRP, comes in a crossover SUV shape, and offers a maximum range of 252 miles on a charge with their front wheel drive model. For me right there, that already seals the deal. At $47,000, you can get a 279 mile range all wheel drive Model Y, or at $50,000, a 330 mile range all wheel drive Model Y. Still though, if you wanna save a few thousand dollars, you may be considering this car. It's built on Toyota's ETNGA platform, has an updated Toyota interior, includes things like wireless charging, digital key capability, and more, but lacks in a few really important areas. You can charge at speeds up to 150 kilowatts in the BZ4X, but that's only for a specific battery pack. The CATL packs for the all-wheel drive model only charge up to 100 kilowatts. Inside EVs saw max speeds of 88 kilowatts at 16% state of charge when they tested it. These are really disappointing charging speeds, and it took them about an hour to get up to an 80% charge. On top of this, the BZ4X is known to have even worse charging in cold weather. Toyota says, quote, DC charging may not work on all-wheel drive BZ4X when the temperature is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. As temperatures decrease below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, charging time will increase significantly. So it already has really bad charging times, but gets even worse in cold weather. It's an absolute no-go if you live in a cold climate, and it loses incredible amounts of range in these temperatures as well. I'd argue that right there, that's enough to make this car not worthwhile, because it just doesn't appear to be well engineered. But then there's the recall. The BZ4X was recalled for some time because there was risk of the wheels falling off. That was remedied, and then earlier this year as well, the Subaru Solterra, built off the same platform, saw the exact same issue. The BZ4X has had a rough launch and lacks in a lot of crucial areas for electric vehicles. I hope Toyota can learn from this experience and do far better on their next EV effort. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, FE Battery Metals, trading under ticker symbol FEMFF. To start with, keep in mind this is not investment advice. In the past two years, an Australian lithium giant is up 683%, likely thanks to advancing their mine and processing plants in Quebec. They are a $2 billion company and are investing millions into making this region one of the only North American lithium mines. While all of this is happening, FE Metals has been acquiring land near this area for when others decide to enter the region. FE Battery Metals Corp. is focused on identifying, exploring, and advancing early stage lithium pegmatite projects in Canada. They currently hold over 60,000 acres in Quebec, along with other exploration projects located throughout North America. Elon Musk recently said that lithium batteries are the new oil, and that's in large part due to the large demand there will be for lithium as electric cars keep growing in popularity. The Quebec government is targeting $7 billion in investment in the lithium battery sector this decade, where FE Metals is working. BASF and GM have announced facilities as well, and it's expected to keep expanding. For more information regarding FE battery metals, visit their website linked in the description below, and you can find their US ticker under FEMFF. As for that Subaru Solterra, again, it's built on the same ETNGA platform, so it has a lot of the same issues as the BZ4X. The Solterra comes with a standard dual motor powertrain and all wheel drive, so its range is going to be a little lower. Its 72.8 kilowatt hour battery offers just 220 miles of range per charge, and this one starts at $44,995 MSRP. For just $2,000 more, the Model Y offers 50 miles more range and a whole lot more features. One benefit for the Solterra is a very smooth ride with eight point three inches of ground clearance. While that will be great for taking it off-road, it won't be able to go that long on a road trip without long waits to charge back up. It does have an off-road assist mode though, which can help it drive in snow and other off-road terrain, so this one might make sense if you find yourself taking short off-road trips. In certain circumstances, it seems like it does better than the BZ4X offering 150 kilowatt charging speeds, but it'll take up to 32 minutes to charge from 10 to 80%, and that's an ideal estimate. A lot of time fast charging is going to be unreliable, and since it's built on the same platform as the BZ4X, we're not too confident this is gonna be much better. On Tesla's side of things, even with the supercharger being as reliable as it is, another car you may regret buying is the Tesla Model X. The consumer report I mentioned earlier uses the 2020 Model X as an example of body hardware issues, with owners reporting that the gullwing doors don't always close properly. They occasionally fail to open or close properly, get stuck halfway, and this has been a source of frustration for many Model X owners. I experienced this issue once when reviewing a new Model
Model X Plaid last year, and I can imagine it could get a little annoying having to press the button multiple times to get the door to open. These issues are probably related to the sensors malfunctioning that are meant to prevent the doors from hitting objects. Those sensors not working can also lead to the doors then hitting objects and needing costly repairs. The 2020 Model X also has issues with seals and weather stripping, which can cause water leaks and wind noise. Other noted issues have been the windshield cracking more easily than other vehicles, the suspension system wearing out quicker than it should, and battery issues. The Model X has a 100 kilowatt hour battery that brings its range up to 371 miles, which beats most other seven-seater electric SUVs. Owners have reported, though, that it drains too quickly, and it struggles with maintaining fast charging speeds as well as the Model Y or 3 do. Back in 2015, Elon Musk even admitted at a press conference that he wasn't sure anyone should have made this car, because it was the most difficult car in the world to build. There are so many more features and difficult to build parts on the Model X than it is necessary for us to sell the cars. Recently, Tesla has cut Model S and X prices significantly, and we've seen evidence that Model Xs are starting to pile up in inventory despite that. They've even been offering up to six years of unlimited free supercharging for certain owners to upgrade. All of these signs seem to add up to paint a picture that says Model X demand is not what it used to be, and there are a number of reasons why that may be. We've also seen this car, as well as the Model S, being taken off of configurators in right-hand steering countries, so they may be considering a discontinuation of it in those markets. That could be the first sign of a series of larger rollbacks on this car. Of course, that's all speculation, and we'll have to see how this all pans out. The Model X offers a lot of things, but it's definitely not Tesla's top focus, and it includes a lot of complicated features that may need fixing over something like a Model Y, which is far cheaper. Next up, on the opposite side of the EV spectrum is the 2019 Fiat 500e, offering a hilarious low range of just 84 miles on a full charge from a 25 kilowatt hour battery pack. EPA is under ideal circumstances, so in cold weather, this car will barely be able to drive to the next city and back without getting dangerously low on charge. Then if you do stop at a fast charger, you can expect up to 85 kilowatt charging speeds. It's just a very tiny car, and Fiat hasn't created a battery pack or a motor that's efficient enough to make up for that. For one, it's small enough that it'll probably be a little uncomfortable for you to drive if you're on the taller side. Also, cargo speed space is usually a benefit that EVs have over ICE vehicles, but that of course won't be the case in this car. At a price point of nearly $35,000, this car does not deliver enough value, especially with its limited features. But if sheer smallness is a commodity for you, and you don't have to drive further than 40 miles from your house, this may be the car for you. Then there's the Mini Cooper SE, another car that prides its cuteness over its range. This one does a little better though, getting 110 miles on a full charge, and it starts at $30,750. It has a 28.9 kilowatt hour usable battery pack that can charge up to 50 kilowatts, so you can recoup, pardon the pun, up to 80% in 36 minutes. This one will also have a lot less storage space than other subcompacts, but it has a little more than the Fiat. That said, most people don't buy cars this tiny for their storage space, and options for EVs at this price point are pretty limited, but it's still fairly similar, low range, doesn't charge that fast. Next up is the Mazda MX-30. This is a crossover SUV, so the battery pack should be significantly larger than something like the Mini Cooper SE, right? Well, it offers a 35.5 kilowatt hour battery that gives it 100 miles of range on a charge. They claim fast charging speeds of 36 minutes to go from 20 to 80%, and this one starts at $34,110. Saving a few thousand dollars definitely has its drawbacks here. For $3,000 more, their Premium Plus trim has the same powertrain and battery, and therefore same range, a premium audio system, and blind spot assist. You also get different paint and interior options and a heated steering wheel, but other than that, they're pretty much identical. Overall, this is a loser when it comes to range, especially with every other electric SUV in its category. The VW e-Golf is the electric version of VW's most popular car, but it's not a winner yet. Again, you can get another used EV pretty easily at the price point, with a longer range for less money. Its 35.8 kilowatt hour battery offers a range of 125 miles EPA, which you can fast charge at speeds up to 40 kilowatts. So you can get it up to 80% at a fast charger in about 45 minutes, according to VW. The hard part about reading about how long it takes to get to a certain percentage of a battery pack is that all of these battery packs are different sizes. So it's gonna make a very big difference across battery pack sizes and efficiency in these vehicles. The 2019 e-Golf started at $32,790 new, and there are other models from that year at that price point that have a longer range, including the Chevy Bolt and Nissan Leaf. That said, this car does come with the premium features that VW is known for, like a spacious interior, adaptive cruise control, front assist, a blind spot sensor, park assist, traffic jam assist, and emergency assist to bring the car to a controlled stop. 
Then jumping back over to the opposite side of the EV spectrum, we have the Hummer EV. Weighing in at about three VW e-Golfs, or 9,063 pounds, this truck is absolutely massive. For comparison, the upcoming Cybertruck is somewhere between five and 6,000 pounds. Where some of the EVs we talked about sacrificed range for a small size, this truck sacrifices efficiency for a huge size, but that's not new for a Hummer. Its battery alone weighs more than a Honda Civic at 2,923 pounds. So in order to give it a usable range, their solution was just to add a lot more batteries, instead of focusing on making the car itself more efficient. The problem there is that more batteries translates to more weight, which adds to the work the batteries have to do. Despite that, they claim that the Hummer's range is upward of 329 miles, though car and driver found it to be closer to 290 miles in an all-highway range test. The real problem, though, is efficiency. It's going to be expensive to get all of those miles out of that battery at once. At least with 350 kilowatt fast charging capabilities, they claim that 212 kilowatt hour battery will take about 10 minutes to regain 100 miles of range. That's if you can find a 350 kilowatt charging station though, and in my experience, these can be hard to find unoccupied and actually working properly. This battery is so huge, it's caused production issues, so it's not widely available either. If you want a new one, all you can do right now is sign up for an update. Then if they do reopen orders, it starts around $84,650. That's a lot more than the much more efficient Rivian R1T and Ford F-150 Lightning. For most people, this truck is just not practical. But when has someone really bought a Hummer for practicality? Not all of the EVs we discussed here are offered in all markets, but these criticisms can offer you some insight as to what to look out for if you're shopping for a new or used EV in your area. Overall, it's important to keep in mind that newer cars are going to have newer battery types and platforms, and will therefore be more efficient and have longer ranges. This is something most companies are working on constantly, especially Tesla. With over-the-air software updates, improvements can be made in your car automatically years after you buy it. Drivers in the US will probably be looking for more range, but if you're in Europe, a 100 mile range might be perfect for you. Just know that road tripping is going to be a challenge with most of these cars. In the meantime, if you want to see more about new incentives for the Model S, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.